It's the hottest month of the year and all I can think about, Halloween. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. I have another Halloween card today. I'm going to be using the Spellbinders Better Press system and I've got the coolest Halloween plate, but I'm gonna do some inky techniques, gonna bust out some funkiness and see how well it works with the Better Press system. To see those Halloween card projects, stick around. They're coming up next. Today I have a voiceover recording, so if I sound a little different and you don't hear all the sounds, there's roofers putting a new roof on. But here are the things that we're using. I got stuff. Let's get into the project. So I'm starting out here using the Distress Mica Stains, and I thought this would be cool to have all three of the classic Halloween triads together on a panel. And I added a little water to this, right? Because I thought maybe it will get them moving a little bit. And once I had layer one, I brought the heat tool to the paper and facilitated the drying. So once that was mostly dry, I'm bringing in Hocus Pocus, another Distress Mica Stain. And again, hitting it with some water and facilitating the drying with the heat it tool. I don't know if I needed to dry it every time, but you know, this is what I'm doing. And the shine on this, it's so hard. To, well, you can kind of catch it there on the left, but it's beautiful. Bringing in Bubbling Cauldron, I just flipped the paper over. And again, hitting it with some water and then bringing in the heat tool. So this is panel one. And I'm going to just let this one dry. I dabbed off a little excess because I wasn't sure if that was going to take too long to dry. And this is going to be panel one. So it's an experiment really, because I have not done a ton with this particular product, but there you go. Now on to background two. And here's a cool thing about this cardstock from Spellbinders, this cotton cardstock that is designed to work really well with the Better Press system. You can do things on it, and that's what I wanted to test out. So I decided to blend with oxides because I wasn't sure if I would get the smoothness with the dye inks, and I know oxides are so creamy, and the cotton cardstock has got a bit of tooth or texture to it, but this actually worked really well. At first, I was like, this is not working. This looks like a hot mess. I'm creating a vortex of purple but you just gotta keep working the ink, right? Just keep going around. And I love having the paper held in place with the Waffle Flower Grip Mat. That tool is getting a workout here in my studio, but I absolutely love it. So we're bringing in the Villainous Potion. I've got that shaded lilac. I wanted to create an area that felt light and uh, you know, kind of dreamy in the center. And then I'm bringing in the Black Soot. Now, this is where I wasn't 100% sure if this was working or not because I had a big globby there on the right and I started to panic and then I thought, Kathy, it's paper. It's paper and it's gonna be beautiful. So working that in, blending, going over things, bringing in a little more of the Villainous Potion and that's the panel. So I just gonna set this aside and let it all kind of smooth out and meld and then we're gonna add some shine. This is the Aqua Pigment in Gilded from Brutus Monroe, and I love this product. I've got my fan brush, and I'm gonna tap a little off and just bring in some shiny spatter. This is my new favorite gold product. I just think it's beautiful. It's already liquid. You don't really have to add any water to it, and it just is perfect for little gold spatters like this. And even when I got some big globbies on, I wasn't too concerned because I knew you're just making a background cath. It's going to be fine. Kind of dabbed it off there, and there it is. And the shine is out of this world. It almost looks like a galaxy, and that really wasn't what I was going for. But now, let's move on to the Better Press system. So both panels are dry, and look at that shine. Oh, it looks so great. And there is the other panel. They look good. They're ready to go. And I just wanted to see what happens when you get product onto this paper and then add your impression. So I'm taking off the, is it called the platen? I think so. And I'm positioning my plate right in the center of the chase. Is that what it's called? I should know these things, but here's what I'm gonna do. 
I decided instead of taping on the corners because I just don't want to mar up any of what I've done here with the mica stain. I don't think it would have come off anyway, but I decided, you know what, just do this and tape it on the back. Kind of how I do whenever I use a cling stamp. And this works great too. So if you have something all the way to the edge that you don't want to tape anything on, you could do this technique this way, put it into place, and now it's time for the ink. Now this is the black. I have not re-inked this pad since I got it, although I do have a re-inker, but I've only done a couple of projects so far with the Better Press system. And so it takes a little while. You gotta do the pounce and twist and the pounce and twist and really get that plate coated, right? Because you want to have as much ink as possible to press into the paper. Now, because this paper has a layer of mica stain on it, I really wasn't sure how dark it was going to be but this is why we play, this is why we experiment. So putting the platen back on, I've got my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, and I'm just gonna run it through. And I go slow, I don't know if you're supposed to go slow or fast, but I always just kinda take my time. I'm showing this in real time. I could hear people pounding above my head as the roof was going in, and I thought to myself, oh, it's all gonna be worth it someday and the, some days today, because the roof is now done as I record this, but that's neither here nor there. Let's take a look at the results. Ah, I think this is so cool. Now, it looked a little light to me in the center, and I don't know if I just had more of the mica stain. So, here's the beauty of this piece. You just ink it up again, right? That metal plate does not move once it's on the chase and so you can put it right back down as long as your paper stayed in the same place, run it through again, and then you can add one more layer to the project. And that bumped up the black quite a bit on top and bottom. Still a little light in the middle, but I think that looks so good. All right, let's move on to the next panel because we are going to do the exact same thing essentially. So inking up the plate, Popping on the purpley background, again, taping it into place in the same manner, running it through. I, you could have put tape on the corners. It would have been just fine. But look at that. I love that so much. Like, it's, I wouldn't have expected something that really did look more like a galaxy once I was done to be so cool for a Halloween vibe. And again, I did it twice. I think just to test out, does the metal plate really not move? Yeah, it really does not move. And I think that turned out even better than the first one. Now, it could have been because the mica stain, you know, has more property to it somehow, but to clean off, I started with a little water, but water doesn't really do much. So I just brought in some ultra stamp cleaner from Simon Says Stamp or Ultra Clean. You know, I've, I've used alcohol too, but I have since learned that you probably shouldn't use the alcohol on the plate itself because it does have a special coating. But I did bring in my Hero Arts scrubber block just to get a nice, you know, final clean on that. And if it stains, it doesn't matter. You know, you're just gonna be using it for the same type of thing. So black note cards I thought would be perfect for these projects. And off camera, I trimmed down each panel, I think like an eighth of an inch off each side, so it's just a little bit trimmed down. I put some foam tape on the back, this is from Ulta New, and then pop those pretty little spooky, ooky panels right onto the note cards. So we've got that little margin of space, but look at the shine, and I love that you do the techniques first, right, and then press your plate into the panel. I think it turned out so fun. And yeah, I love, I love the shine on this. I mean, that is just beautiful. And it's a shine that just does not come off on your hands. So those are the finished cards. So, so fun. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Have a fantastic and lovely day. I, I don't know how to do voiceovers very well, so if I sounded a little awkward, well, just know, it's because I am. 
to see more Halloween projects, check out the two thumbnails I have linked below, and I will see you in those videos.